I am Sagar Jitani from Department of Electrical Engineering, GMIT. In today's session, we will discuss a one important example of a DTLTI system. So we can say discrete time, linear time invariant systems. Till now, we have completed all the concepts that is required for our discrete time analysis. So today, we are uh, calculating one master sum for each and every concept that we have con uh, completed till now okay uh, this particular uh, example will also cover uh, some concepts from the chapter number 1 like uh, discrete time shifting as well as the disc disc discrete time uh, scaling response also okay and uh, it will also cover some concepts that we have already covered in our previous sessions like uh, uh, two blocks are in cascaded will be convolved with each other and the blocks that are connected parallelly in the systems will be added directly to each other okay there are many concepts i wish uh, you will uh, take care of all the concepts that we have completed till now i will i will uh, explain whole example completely with uh, all the proofs okay so this is our question the question is that uh, consider an linear time invariant system with input and output relation by y of n is equal to 0 0.8 into x of n plus 1 plus x of n means if we fed one x of n to the system then we will have a, this kind of output now i wish you should know or you should uh, you have remem remember this kind of thing that how particular input is uh, uh, processed by these particular systems and it will give this kind of output okay so this is our output when we had applied one input that is x of n okay now uh, what kind of information that they are asking uh, to find uh, by using this particular equation okay they are what they have given they have given one equation they have given one input that is x of n and they have given one system okay this particular equation and this particular system both are uh, independent to each other okay this particular both in uh, equation as well as this block diagram does not have any relation okay so see here we have total five questions in one question they are asking for a five data from this particular three types of uh, question that they have given okay so first one first task is that we find the impulse response h of n okay so what uh, how we will calculate this kind of uh, question they have said that the find impulse response impulse response means uh, output a response due to the impulse input here we have given input as an x of n if we want to find the impulse response then we have to give a uh, input in the form of impulse means we if we want to solve this kind of uh, equation then we have to replace this x of n with delta of n means x is replaced by the delta means input is replaced with the impulse uh, input to the system okay so this kind of question will be directly solved by replacing x with the delta now the second question is this system is causal or not okay this is the question or this is the content that we have already discussed in our chapter number one as well as in the chapter number two okay so what is causal causal means it will have only positive values it does not depends on the past uh, overall future values means if we provide a input at particular point then we will have output at the same time or after some delay okay means this particular region if our system is a causal then our output should be in between this particular region or positive infinity okay zero and positive infinity that are included so we will discuss that our system is a causal or not we will also discuss why our system is a causal or not okay now the particular uh, question third is that the determine the system response y of n for input shown in figure one this is our input and for this input we will find the output okay by using this expression so this is our question number three we will use this input and 
we will find dy of n okay now question number 4 says that the consider interconnection of lti systems shown in figure 2 we have to consider this figure for this question and they say that they find the overall impulse response of the total system we will we will have to find the impulse response of the system again a uh, impulse response means a uh, in response due to the impulse input okay that we will consider uh, in the question number 4 and in the question number 5 solve for overall response of the total system for the same input x of n right it means we have to consider this particular uh, system and we will have to find the convolution of x of n with this particular configuration okay so let us discuss one by one all the question and we will complete our session uh, smoothly okay so first particular point is that find the impulse response means we have to find the h of n i am writing all things again because uh, we, we have some uh, lengthy example with us today so this is a we can also say that this is a master example okay so first thing is that a uh, first question is that to find the impulse response okay so we have a one system expression that is a y of n is equal to 0.8 into x of n plus 1 plus 0.8 x of n this is our expression that is given in the question okay this this is our expression that is the same like this okay means i have just multiply 0.8 into the bracket okay so this particular expression looks like this okay now we have to find the impulse response means input should be in the form of impulse so i am just replacing x with the delta this is the simple thing okay so after replacing x with the delta we will have delta of n plus 1 plus 0.8 into x of uh, sorry delta of n okay okay so see here now we have this expression now see here this is our input that is x of n that they have given to us they have say that uh, we have 0.8 multiply delta of n plus 1 means delta of n plus 1 means uh, we have to see this location means this location is seems like this n plus 1 is equal to 0 means n is equal to minus 1 n is equal to minus 1 so there is a one value at the location of a minus 1 so the value of location at minus 1 that is a 1 so delta of n plus 1 we will put the value delta of n plus 1 that is 1 okay this is the location and this is the value of impulse so it will be delta of n plus 1 means at the location of a minus 1 we have 1 so we are just directly uh, put the delta of n plus 1 which is equal to 1 plus 0.8 delta of n n is equal to 0 we have to compare the bracket directly is equal to 0 if we does not have any value with the n then we can directly say this, this is n is equal to 0 so this is the location n is equal to 0 location we have a magnitude 1 so again delta of n plus 1 is equal to 1 so we have y of n that is equal to h of n because we have impulse output so y of n will be replaced by the h of n because as we have already discussed in the particular concept of impulse response that at that time i have said that when whenever i am discussing about the impulse response then the output will be replaced by this instead of y we will use h okay so our overall response will be 0.8 comma 0.8 okay or we can say 0.8 plus 0.8 that is a 0.16 okay but in the form of a output in the comma then we can directly say that this particular expression may be written as 0.8 comma 0.8 for the individual inputs okay so this is our uh, impulse response of our first question okay means our first answer now let us discuss a second question a second question is that is this system is a causal and why okay this is our question that is the second question now in this particular case we doesn't this uh, we haven't uh, defined the origin from where our signal is starting but uh, if we analyze our question that our 
particular signal is multiplied with this signal uh, that is here and this signal that is here means from this particular input we can predict that the our center is here okay now if we want to plot if we want to plot this output that is the second question second question say that analyze the impulse response okay so we are just analyzing our impulse response so if you want to draw by using the gra graphical method so we can say that this is at the location of zero and this is the at the left side so it will be a minus so we have a one value that is a 0 0.8 and the second value that is again 0 0.8 but location that we have to consider is a 0 and minus 1 means 0 and left side that is a minus 1 so second question say that uh, is that our system is causal or not uh, if you if you know the conditions of a causality for any signals or any systems is that you should have output at the zero or after the zero if there is a output or input before the zero then we can say that our system is a non causal system okay this system has some output or some input that is dependent on the past well uh, sorry future values that's why we can say that our system is a non causal system if our output is like this this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 0 then all the values are only uh, possible or only uh, present at the location of a positive value or a past value or current value then we can say that this system is a causal system okay but for this case we are just saying that our system is a non causal system now let us discuss our question number 3 question number 3 says that determine the response y of n for input shown in figure 1 okay this is our input that is x of n okay and if we want to write uh, this particular graphical representation into the sequence form then we can write this x of n is equal to minus 1 0 1 2 means we have total 4 values inside the bracket okay all these value are 1 okay all these value are 1 but where is the origin origin is the second from the left this is minus 1 this is 0 this is 1 and this is 2 so here we have origin so this is our question equation number 1 and we have to find the response okay response of y of n by using the figure 1 means this is our input and we have to find the output when we are applying this kind of input that is x of n okay so now we have to write our means we have x of n that is a 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma 1 and origin at the second place and now we have to find the y of n but how we can find the y of n we have a one question or one expression or one relation that is given in the uh, particular question that is 0 0.88 x of n plus 1 and plus x of n so i am just writing this particular expression again that is 0 0.8 i am just directly multiplying inside the bracket so we will have x n plus 1 plus 0 0.8 x of n okay okay so this kind of step have to uh, uh, if you want to solve this kind of expression then uh, you have to understand this basic concept that this is our system this is our input and this is our output okay we want to find the output okay what we have we have input as well as impulse response if we want to convolve uh, if we will convolve these particular two things that is uh, x of n and h of n then we can find the output y of n okay x of n is already given in the question by means of a graph graph and h of n that we have already found by using the expression okay we have found this y of n by using uh, this expression okay so we have uh, input as well as we have a impulse response okay so if we some if we convolve 
this x of n with the h of n then and then we will have output that is a y of n okay so how we can convolve this two expression so for that we have already uh, learned one method for the total we have learned four method of convolution but easiest method is a tabular method so we are using a tab tabular method for the convolution okay so we have to draw one table one for this uh, we have two axes total uh, one data will be in the form of horizontal and the second data will be in the form of vertical okay so we have a input that is a one 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 so we i am just writing here x of n for our effort so we have data one 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 okay and in the form of a vertical we have h of n okay so first data is a 0 0.8 and the second data is that is 0 0.8 now what we have to do we have to multiply first row with first column so 0 0.8 multiply with 1 that is 0 0.8 again 0 0.8 is multiplied with 1 so again it is a 0 0.8 again 0 0.8 1 0 0.8 0 0.8 here also we have 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 and lastly 0 0.8 okay so this is our table now what we have to do we have to add all the diagonal terms to each other and it will give us an resultant convolution sum okay so to find the y of n we have to add all these values so first there is only one value that is a 0 0.8 comma 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 that is a 0 0.16 again 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 that is a 0 0.16 comma 0 0.16 comma 0 0.8 okay in previous lecture i have given one task to you all uh, that how we can find uh, the origin for this particular case okay i wish uh, you know already how to find the origin of particular case we can find by using our question okay so how we can find we have to consider lower limit of our questions okay so we have total two values a uh, one at the location okay let me change the color of my marker okay so see here we have zero here we have one we have two and here we have minus one and same here we have zero and here we have minus one so we have to find the lower limit lower limit that is a means we to find the lower limit what we have to do we have to add or sum up both the value that is on the negative side or highest negative values and we have to add highest positive values so highest negative values that is a minus 1 plus minus 1 minus 1 plus minus 1 that is equal to minus 2 and the second term that is at the highest value highest value is a 0 and here highest value that is a 2 so highest limit will be a 0 plus 2 that is a 2 means our signal our response will be starting from minus 2 and end to the plus 2 so if we consider here is a minus 2 minus 1 here is a 0 and here is 1 so you can see that there is no any missing data means here we have minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 a continuous sequence if 1 is absent then we can directly conclude that uh, we made some mistake in our calculation but here we have from minus 2 to 2 continuous data okay if you put minus 2 directly and 2 directly then the middle value will be present directly so there is no mistake okay so where is a zero we have zero here so this is our origin so this is a simple method or tabulation method for the convolution so this is our output and we have completed our question number six now let us discuss a question number four question number four says that consider this particular graph and now find the impulse response okay impulse response means response to the input okay so i am just uh, drawing uh, draw this particular question uh, below so that we will have a better idea and we does not have to scroll again and again okay this is our question okay so this is our figure number four figure number four now what we have to do we have to find the impulse response of this particular system we have input x of n we have output y of n but this particular graph we have to analyze so how we can analyze this kind of a block 
we have already discussed in previous lecture that uh, two blocks in the cascaded will be convolved with each other okay multiplication and convolution both are different thing if you are discussing in the time domain then there will be a convolution if you are discussing in the frequency domain then there will be a multiplication but that type of that kind of concepts we will discuss in our laplace fourier as well as in the z transform calculations okay so here we have two blocks cascaded so we will do the convolution of them and there is a resultant that will be considered for example let us consider the resultant will be x okay then this x is in the parallel with this block so both this is the resultant and this is the parallel so both will be added to each other so we will calculate based on this calculation okay okay so let us find let us convert this particular block diagram into the a sequence format okay let me just erase this chunk here okay now what we have to do we have to convolve these two particular blocks so delta of n minus 1 both are in the cascaded form so it will be convolved with each other and here we have h of n okay so we have completed these two blocks and these two blocks are connected parallelly to each other and here we have summation sign so we can directly add this particular block to this h of n okay so this will be our resultant impulse or total impulse response of the system let us consider ht of n as per your book so ht of n that will be a total impulse response that we have to find okay so first now we have almost analyzed our question that they are asking they are just given uh, one block diagram in the form of instead of this kind of expression okay just to confuse us now let us analyze our sequence so here we have impulse impulse is shifted by the value of one okay means we have impulse but where it, it is located it is located at the value of n is equal to one okay so i'm directly writing now n is equal to one i wish you have you, you will understand this uh, kind of a uh, direct uh, calculation means this particular impulse is present at the location of one okay we have impulse that is located at the value of one and all the values uh, that is uh, in, uh, that is not present for this uh, value that is a 2 3 4 5 means all the value uh, on the n axis other than 1 will be 0 and now we have to find the h of n we have already find the value of h of n okay okay this is h of n so we have already find the h of n that is a 0 0.8 0 0.8 okay so we have the value for the h of n that is a 0 0.8 comma 0 0.8 and origin is here and again we have h of n that is exactly like this okay but here in this case we have a minus so all the value will be multiplied with the minus and here we have positive h of n okay so from where we will start we will first of all um, convolve these two particular signal by using a convolution method okay so if you want to write this uh, particular impulse signal then we can write this as an at the location of a one we have one value and at the location of a zero we does not have anything so i'm directly writing zero because it is an impulse which is present only at the location of one so here will be uh, the origin at the location of a zero and here will be the one okay so this is our first sequence and the second sequence that is here now we will convolve both the sequence to each other so what we will have the resultant convolution okay we will find the convolution of these two particular thing and then we will directly add with the h of n okay h of n that is a 0 0.8 but here we have minus h of n so minus h of n will be like this simply minus will be multiplied inside the all the values origin will be at the same location here origin will be at the same location now we have to convolve both the thing by using the regular method so what i will do i will just add uh, this minus 0.8 minus 0.8 in the row and the 0 and 1 in the column so 
now if we multiply 0 with anything that will be 0, 0 multiply with anything that is 0 and 1 multiply with anything that is a minus 0 0.8, 1, 1 multiply with minus 0 0.8 that is a minus 0 0.8 same. Okay, now add all the diagonal values then we will have uh, this particular response. Let us consider it as an h1 of n. Okay, so h1 of n is equal to 0 comma minus 0 0.8 comma minus 0 0.8 this is our closed bracket now we have found this particular bracket by using the convolution now what we have to do we have to add this particular x h1 of n to the h of n so resultant h t of n will be h1 of n plus h of n we have h1 of n that is a 0 minus 0.5 uh, oh sorry minus 0.8 and minus 0.8 plus h of n oh, what is the value of h of n that is here 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 oh, sorry comma 0 0.8 but uh, in this particular question h of n we have origin that is here but in this case after the convolution we we doesn't know we does not know where is the actual origin of this particular graph then how we how we can calculate we have to calculate by using our questions so a lower limit here is a 0 here is a 1 here is a 0 here is a minus 1 so lower limit is at the location of a, we have to find if you want to find the lower limit then what we have to do we have to add all the lower values that is present in the sequence so lower value at the location of a 0 and this lower value at the location of minus 1 so 0 plus minus 1 that will be a minus 1 and higher limit will be 1 plus 0 1 plus 0 that is 1 means our sequence is only present in between minus 1 to 1 and after the minus 1 we will have a 0 so there is a no any missing data so we can directly say that we have origin at the location of a uh, 0 means it at the middle now if we want to add there's two sequences then what we have to do we have to balance the origin or we have to make origin parallel to our question okay so let me just move uh, this particular uh, second sequences with the parallel to this origin okay so now what we have to do we have to add those two values same we can add there's two values okay but here after the cows if we doesn't have anything then we can put 0 just to balance our sequence now just let me give some time to uh, write things properly 0 minus 1 will be here is a 0 and minus 1 we, here we have 0 ok so 0 parallel with 0 0.8 means all are now ready to add ok so what we do we will add 0 uh, value which is present at the location of a 0 we will add the location minus 1 and we will location add the location at 1 ok so this is our minus 1 minus 1 so at the location of minus 1 we have two magnitudes that is a 0 and 0 0.8 so resultant will be 0 plus 0 0.8 that is a 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 that will be 0 and minus 0 0.8 plus 0 that will be again minus 0 0.8 so resultant will be like this that is our total impulse response of our question number 3 ok so this is our answer that is st of n 0 0.8 comma 0 comma minus 0 0.8 example is bit lengthy but this example is uh, collected from your book so if you want to refer your book then there is a uh, many example but I have selected the largest one ok so this is our question number Four that we have completed now let us discuss for the question number five example is really simple just you have to collect data correctly okay now let us see what is the question number five solve for overall response of the total system for the same input x of n means we have to find the total response okay total response input is x of n okay so see how we can understand this particular question they have said that find the total response 
that is y of n okay total response means y of n when the input is x of n that they are saying us to find the total response when the input is x of n okay let us consider one sim simple system to understand our question we have x of n they are saying that when the input is x of n then find the y of n okay but for that we have to find the h of n also but that we have already found in the form of st of n total impulse response means here we will we'll have a impulse response that is st of n we already have x of n we have st of n and we have to find y of n okay the value of x of n that is already given in the equation that is in the form of graph see here we have x of n x of n that is 1 1 1 1 which has origin at the second place okay so we have x of n that is 1 1 1 1 which has origin at the second place now what the what is the value of ht of n that we have already currently calculated that is a 0 0.8 0 minus 0 0.8 and origin at the middle okay 0 0.8 0 minus 0 0.8 and origin at the location of middle okay so now what we have to do we have to find the total response we have this particular x of n and we have ht of n if we want to find the total response then what we have to do we have to convolve every time we have to convolve input as well as the impulse response to each other then and then we can find the total response of the system by just convolving x of n with the ht of n or h of n okay so if you want if if you want to convolve this x of n st of n then again we have to use a tabulation method that is really simple what we have to do we have to directly put all the data that is present in the question in the either in the row or either in the column you can uh, you, you will you may be flexible uh, to write this thing here in the vertical form also okay answer will be same 0 0.8 here is a 0 and here is a minus 0 0.8 okay now simply what we have to do we have to multiply all this value to each other okay 0 0.8 multiply with 1 that is 0 0.8 0 0.8 multiply with 0 0.1 that is 0 0.8 again 0 0.8 1 0 0.8 and here is also 0 0.8 0 multiply with anything will be 0 so 0 0 0 0 and here is a minus 0 0.8 multiply with 1 1 1 1 so it each and every place we have 0 minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 here we have also minus 0 0.8 and here we have also minus 0 0.8 okay now simply what we have to do we have to add all the diagonals value example is really simple if you know the tabulation method then our example is most easiest example that we have till calculated now the resultant will be y of n y of n that is due to the x of n convolve with ht of n so resultant will be in the form of addition of the diagonal element so 0 0.8 alone so it will be directly written 0 0.8 plus 0 that is a 0 0.8 again 0 0.8 plus 0 that is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 that is a again 0 here we have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 so it will be cancel each other same 0 plus minus 0 0.8 so minus 0 0.8 it will be added to 0 it will give minus 0 0.8 and here we have minus 0 0.8 alone so we are directly written it like this so this is our answer of our question number 5 now one thing is remaining where is the location uh, origin of our question so to find the origin of our question we have to find two limits first one is a higher condition and the second one is a lower condition means lower and higher okay so how we can find the lower and higher condition we have to just give the location in the base of origin in our question here we have minus one here we have one so to find the lower limit we have to add all the lower values that is a minus 1 plus minus 1 
that is a minus 2. Now to find the higher limit we have to add, uh, add all the values that at the higher location that is a 1 plus 2. We have to add only locations 1 plus 2 that is a 3. So here we have minus 2 and here we have 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2. So our middle terms are balanced minus 2 to 3. So our example we can say that our origin it is at the location of 0 that is here. So this is our end of the lecture. Now just uh, revise all the example properly and if you want to refer your book then uh, this particular example is present at the page number 5.47 chapter number 5 ok. The example number is a 5.56 I am just writing here example number is a 5.5.6 page number is a 5.47 or 547 and the chapter number 5 that is that you know very well ok. So this is the end of our lecture and uh, if you want to calculate or if you want to understand some more examples then you can refer uh, your book also and as we have already discussed in our previous session that uh, we have only uh, one lecture remaining ok. So this is our end of the uh, uh, chapter and till now or till today we have completed total uh, four chapters that is a chapter number one introduction to this signal chapter number two that is introduction to the system chapter number three that is a CTLTI system and a chapter number five that is a DTLTI system from the next lecture onwards we will start our chapter number four that is a Laplace transforms ok now onwards our lecture will be simplest but we will uh, do more practice on the example because now onwards all the particular chapters will be based on the calculation pure calculation based ok till now we have uh, completed total 4 chapters but all the 4, four chapters contains many concepts as well as many calculation examples but now next onwards it will uh, considered as a conceptual examples but we have to practice each and every example to clear our concepts ok means all the particular works will be on the form of a reverse direction. So next lecture onwards we have to start a Laplace transform then we will start Fourier series, Fourier transform and the Z transform and then we will complete our last chapter that is based on the Arduino programming ok that will be a really simplest it will need only 4 to 5 lectures. So today we have completed total 50% of our syllabus now onwards we will uh, cover uh, Laplace transform before your mid, mid semester examination. So work hard uh, for your mid result for MSc free. If you have any doubt then you can contact me. Thank you so much.